I really need a haircut. Hi everyone, it's Annie, and I'm here today to bring you my January 2021 wrap-up. I read 24 books this month, pretty good. Towards the end of the month, I kind of went downhill and didn't read as much, but it's a stressful time. <laughs> and I think I read a pretty good variety of books this month. I'm pretty excited. So without further ado, let's get into it. So let's start off with the regular books that I read this month. One is sadly not a well-rated book, by me at least. It is A Curse of Roses by Diana Pinguicha. I was really excited about this and I am very disappointed. It sounds amazing. It, the concept of a princess in Portugal who can't eat anything because food turns into flowers for her because of her curse and she has to kiss a girl somewhere to break this curse. Sounds great, doesn't it? I, I don't know. I didn't like it. I think the writing was not great. I know some people have really really liked it, so if it sounds interesting to you, you should check it out. There's also a lot of scenes of self-harm in the book, so make sure you're careful of that. I don't know, it was just... Mm, it was not good. But after that I read two amazing books. This book is one of my favorites that I read this month. It is The Once and Future Witches by Alexi Harrow. I loved this. I really recommend listening to the audiobook because the narrator does an amazing job differentiating between the three sisters' voices. Oh my gosh, I love these three sisters so much. It's about three sisters who are in Massachusetts, New Salem, Massachusetts, during the 1920s where the suffragette movement is happening. And it is about that, but it's uh, just more about general feminism and power for women in general, rather than just the suffrage movement. I loved all the characters. I really, I just loved it so much. I, I don't know what else I can say, just please read this. And the next really good book I read was The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I am so glad I finally read this. It is a horror book written by an indigenous author. And it's about this group of men who, there, there is like a, a tragic incident involving hunting in their past and it comes back to haunt them. And it's really, really good. It's really well written. I mean, Stephen Graham Jones is just a master author. I love his work. So yes, I really recommend it if you haven't already read it. And this month I also ended up reading books 2, 3, and 4 of the Murderbot Diaries series. I really, really liked them. They were all four stars for me. I just love that they're easy to read. They're short, obviously. They're novellas. And I just love Murderbot and I really, really love their adventures. I love the robot that they meet along the way. I love them. Mickey and transport bots and everyone. I just love it. And I love how Murderbot is really a softie at heart. I love them. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to reading book five, which is a full-length novel sometime in the near future. I then read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. I loved this love this. It was for the buzzword word dream for Books and Kayla's buzzword-a-thon, and I really loved this. It's so weird. It is really suspenseful, really keeps you on your toes. I read it so fast because I really wanted to know what what was going on, like what is happening in this book. It is so weird. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because it's just so weird and I went into it knowing nothing, so I think you should too. I just highly recommend it. It's also really short, so it's a quick read that I really recommend. Then I read Sadie by Courtney Summers. That is a five-star book. Gosh, I just loved this. Of course, I listened to the audiobook because it's consistently recommended as the audiobook version because of the podcast element of the story. 
The audiobook really does an amazing job. That recommendation is correct. Basically, the story is about a girl named Sadie who goes to look for her younger sister's murderer. There is so much more to the story than that, but then this podcaster is told by Sadie's grandmother that she wants to find her, and the police can't find her, so this podcast guy goes out and interviews people and tries to find Sadie. Oh my god, we need more books like this. This book was breathtaking. It was amazing. Oh my god, I loved it so much. Very, very suspenseful. It felt very real. Sadie's struggle and her personality, her reactions to everything feel so real. And uh, if you haven't read this yet, please read it. <laughs> then I read The Girl in the Tower, the second book of the Winter Night Trilogy. I liked this book better than the first one <laughs> because uh, the main character's older sister, Olga, is a more prominent character in this second book. And I really like her character. And also the main character, Vasilisa, yes, that's her name, her stepmom is not in this book, and I hated her stepmom. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book much better. It was more fast-paced, and I'm looking forward to reading the third one in February. All right, three more books. Next, I read Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. I loved it. Five stars. Oh my god. It was so beautiful. Such a beautiful exploration of trauma. I absolutely adored the found family aspect of it. I mean, literally, the main character is a foster child after a really, really tragic and traumatic incident in her past. Oh my gosh, I loved it so, so much. I picked it up for the Scooby-Doo Readathon for the ghost story prompt. Oh my god, I loved the aspect of the ghost in this book. Ah, oh, I loved it. It was really, really good. It's another short read, so you have the time. I know you do. <laughs> People are on lockdown. Pick up this book. It's so good. Next, I read One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. <sighs> I did not like this book. I'm sorry. I know it's really popular. I wanted to like it. I thought after reading Sadie that I was like, ooh, maybe I really like YA thrillers. Maybe that's like my new genre that I like. But Maybe not, actually. <laughs> this book was bad. It was, not, it was not good. Oh, I hated the characters. I hated all of them. Except Cooper. Cooper was fine for various reasons. Um, I'm not going to give anything away, but just the representation of depression in this was absolutely dismal. Like, it was not good at all. I hated the ending. I hated the relationships. I hated it. I did not like this book. And the last new book, well, the last new book for me that I read was Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. Yay, I finally read this. This has been in my TBR since 2013 when it came out. <laughs> it's about a woman in rural Iceland who is convicted of murdering someone. I'm not going to give it away. And she didn't do it, obviously. Uh, that's her story. But... She is brought to this farm out in the middle of nowhere where she's waiting for her death, for her execution. And this book was beautifully written. Really, really liked it. However, if you're feeling sad, I really don't recommend you pick up this book right away because this book is very depressing. <laughs> very bleak. Very, very sad. There is not a bright spot in this book. I really loved it. That's the only caveat I have with it. At times, it was just like, even though I loved it and I loved how the writing was, I loved the characters, at times I just didn't want to even read it anymore because it was so depressing. So just be warned about that. So let's talk about the nonfiction books I read this month. First, I read Radical Kindness by Angela Santomero. It was fine. I think I gave it two stars, actually. It was super short, and honestly, I picked it just because my library on Libby was, like, encouraging people to read it. There was nothing new in it, no new information. I picked it up because I believe she's the creator of Blue's Clues, which is really interesting, and also she was kind of mentored by Mr. Rogers, 
So I was interested in that. I've read a couple books about Mr. Rogers, and I was just interested in her thoughts, but unfortunately it just wasn't really enjoyable because, like I said, there was no new information, <laughs> at least for someone who has read a lot of self-help. It just basically tells you to be kind and people will be kind back, which is, you know, it's a nice thought, but it doesn't always happen. <laughs> so, yeah. The next nonfiction I read was Dead Mountain, and I gave this five stars. It's the story of the tragedy of the Dyatlov Pass in Russia. This incident, a lot of people are kind of obsessed with because it's a mystery. These hikers, this group of experienced hikers in Russia, were found dead in their tents or around their tents on the Dyatlov Pass, and it's really unclear how they died or why they died because the scene, crime scene maybe, uh, is very mysterious and not very clear. So Donnie H.R. Icar, I don't know, he does an amazing thorough job. He goes to Russia, he hikes to the Dyatlov Pass, he interviews the survivor of this incident, he does so much work, and you can tell that he really, really cares about these people and about finding the truth. So I really, really enjoyed this, and I also recommend reading the audiobook because the author narrates it. The next nonfiction I read as part of a Scooby-Doo readathon, and it is The Cooking Gene by Michael Twitty. This was a really enjoyable book. I think I gave it 4 or 4.5 stars. It was really, really good. Michael Twitty is amazingly knowledgeable. He takes us on his journey with finding out about his own genealogy, about how his ancestors came from Africa to America through the transatlantic slave trade, and how their food that they cooked was passed down through his family, through other black families in the South and elsewhere. And he talks to us about his travels and his knowledge of food is just amazing. He is a really, really, really interesting person. And he also narrates his own audiobook, so I really recommend you check it out. The next nonfiction book I read was Silences So Deep by John Luther Adams. This book was set in Alaska. It's about a composer, John Luther Adams, who moves to Alaska to be alone, uh, and how that move, how the Alaskan wilderness and how the people he meets in Alaska affected his creativity and his music, and how, you know, it affected his life in general. I am really, really interested in books about Alaska, <laughs> and this book just was super interesting to me. It was okay. It was three stars for me. I really enjoyed the Alaskan part of it, but I didn't enjoy so much the musical composition part, because I didn't really expect him to go quite as in-depth as he did. Like, he really went in-depth about how he composes music, which is not really something I'm interested in. I can't, I can't play any instruments. I guess I should have expected that, though, given the uh, subject of the book. But all in all, you know, I enjoyed it. If you're interested in reading more about Alaska, I definitely recommend you check it out. And I really loved reading about his relationships with the people he meets in Alaska, too. That was a really nice part of the book. The next nonfiction book I read was also an ARC. It is Oliver by Stephen Carino. I picked this book up on a whim from NetGalley. It was fine. It was about three stars. Again, I picked it up because the dog is cute. And also the author was from Long Island, where I'm from, so that was really interesting. And I listened to the audiobook, so I got to hear his Long Island accent the whole time, which was like... A taste of home because I'm I'm not home right now. I'm in Japan, so it was nice to listen to. I didn't really expect all the religious talk in the book. I kind of just expected it to be about him finding his lost dog, 
because that's what the synopsis is about. So I was kind of iffy on that. And also he talks a lot about his abusive father, which I also wasn't expecting and didn't really want to read about. It's also part memoir, I get that. It's just about personal enjoyment for me, and this book was, at least I thought, going to be like a really, really feel-good book about a dog. <laughs> and it was, like half of it. So yeah. Alright, so let's talk about some of the other arcs I read. I also read Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I loved this book. I gave it five stars. I don't want to talk too much about it because I already filmed and edited and everything a full review of it, spoiler-free review, that will be out closer to the release date, which is April 29th, I believe, in the UK. And I loved this book. It's a retelling and kind of fleshing out of Ariadne's story. She is originally featured in the Theseus and the Minotaur myth, and I loved this book. I really, really love the new trend of retelling Greek mythology and other well-known stories from the point of view of the women who are often overlooked in the original stories, and oh my gosh, I loved this book so much. Please read it. The next arc I read is The Membranes. This was originally published in the 90s. It's Taiwanese. It's from a Taiwanese author, and it's been translated into English very recently. It's a queer sci-fi slash speculative slash dystopian book. It's also very, very short, which I liked. Um, I did not like this. There was a really, really good concept, really, really good world building kind of it's hard to talk about without giving spoilers but i really really liked the concept but there was just some very very weird scenes in the book very weird sexual stuff that like i really really encourage you to check the content warnings for because i was just not expecting that at all and it was really disturbing <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I did not like this, unfortunately. Okay, two more arcs. The next one is The Project by Courtney Summers. I gave this book a 3.5. I absolutely loved Sadie, and I really wanted to read her new book that was coming out, and I'm so happy still that I got approved for this arc, but unfortunately it just wasn't as good as Sadie. I mean, it's kind of hard to top Sadie, but... I really, really loved the idea of trying to save this girl's sister from a cult, but I don't know, just the way that the cult, and especially the cult leader, was written didn't really work for me, and I felt like while I was reading it, I was waiting for something to happen. Like, I was waiting for something more interesting to happen, I was waiting for something creepier to happen, and I mean, there are really creepy and disturbing parts of the book, but I don't know, maybe it was just the mindset I was in while I was reading it or something, but it just didn't have a big impact on me. I still liked it, I'm glad I read it, and if you're interested in cults, I do recommend that you read it. And the last arc that I read was Blue Bear Woman. I really liked this. This is translated from Quebecois French, and it's by a indigenous author from Quebec. And it is really, really interesting. I gave it 4.5 because while I absolutely loved it, I thought the writing was gorgeous. I really, really liked the characters. But the ending was just bad, <laughs> at least in my opinion. It was really, really abrupt. And like, I don't know, it's just, uh, I don't know. I didn't really like the ending at all. So that was unfortunate. But the rest of the book was still so beautiful that I gave it 4.5. So I really, really recommend that you read this. It isn't a memoir. It's like a magical realism slash fiction, literary fiction book about an indigenous woman who is coming into her own as a shaman. And it's really, really beautifully written, so I highly recommend it. So now let's talk about the new releases that I read this month. First, I read Lore by Alexandra Bracken. Now, I found out by reading this that Alexandra Bracken is a really popular author, and I have never read anything by her. I really liked this. I gave it four stars. I 
wasn't sure what I was expecting. This book was really violent. It's really, really violent for a YA book. <laughs> so just check the content warnings. Um, it was good. It was kind of a Greek mythology, Percy Jackson slash The Hunger Games type of deal. So every seven years, these gods come down and they are forced to be mortal. And there are these kind of clans of humans that have banded together over the years. And if they manage to kill these gods, they get their power and become the new god, like the new Athena, the new Artemis, the new whoever. It's a very interesting premise. Um, I really liked the characters except for the main character. Wasn't a big fan of her. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't hate her. She was fine. But compared to the other characters in the book, I liked them better. Uh, I really recommend you read this. I really, really liked it. So, And it's very, very unique. I really liked its uniqueness. So if you want a unique YA book, definitely check this out. The next new release I read was Remote Control by Neri Okorafor. I really like this. It's another sci-fi novella. So it is about this girl named Fatima. And while she's a child, she finds this mysterious seed that ends up giving her this power to kill people without touching them or anything. It's very, very unique, very interesting idea. Uh, it takes place in Ghana. And I really loved it. I gave it four stars. I think the only complaint is that I wish it was longer. I really wish we had gotten more out of the character and the story, but I really, really liked it. Of course, Nadia Korafor is one of my favorite authors of all time. So I'm really looking forward to what else she's gonna write in the future. And the last new release I read was Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. Wow, oh <laughs> wow, this book was oh, so good, it was so good. Please read it, I gave it five stars. Oh my gosh, guys, this was so beautiful. It was so, oh, so emotional so well written. I loved it so much. It explores what it was like in the 1950s in San Francisco's Chinatown to be a Chinese American, which was not very widely accepted, especially at this time where the Red Scare was going on in America. And it also, at the same time, explores what it's like to be a lesbian Chinese American. And the book balances these two themes so, so well. They were just so well meshed together. Every scene in the book felt important and it felt like it was saying something. I really, really loved it. Every character was important and they had their own thing to add to the story. Oh my god, I loved the main character, Lily. I loved Kath, who is, you know, her love interest. I loved them together. Oh, I love this book so much. It It's one of my favorites that I read this month, and I really, really recommend that everyone checks it out. All right, guys, so that was my January wrap-up. <coughs> Tell me what you thought in the comments down below. If you've read any of these books or if you want to read any of these books in the future, please let me know. Also, let me know what was your favorite book you read this January. I read a lot of great books, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about yours, too. So if you liked this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more bookish videos every Wednesday and Saturday. And I'll see you next time. Bye!